Okay, everybody. I am so excited about this uh, Affinity Studio. Besides the fact of it being free for everybody forever, which is a massive thing, um, I think it's totally brilliant, and I'm excited about that. I'm going to go through certain things that um, over time I'd be finding that I'm struggling with to make sense of, and that usually used to be my pattern with the Affinity Designer package that I used to I have a few tutorials on. Go through the things that I have a little struggle with and see if I can make your life a bit easier. The first thing I jumped to to see if they had was the ability to take a pixel-based image and convert it to vector. And lo and behold, yes, we do have it here. The only challenge I had is once I did it, the thing still looked like pixel-based and I was wondering what's going on here. And hopefully this video will clarify that for you and you might have discovered that for yourself. So I opened up the image and this year, as you can see in the layers palette now, for those of you who know, watch any of my videos, I have my layers here on the left for reasons that I don't need to explain, but there you can see it's pixel based. Okay. So that, that's a physical image. So it's not vector. So if you zoom in, you're going to have your pixels like this. Okay. So I did this and I went like, okay, let's go to Victoria. There we go. Beautiful. Then I clicked on there and it brings up this dialog box here. Image trace and curve fitting. I went like, okay, um, we're going to have a split view here. Let me just click that and see. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. So there we have it. I'm going like, okay, I can see maybe something looks like it's changing, but yeah, like if you look here, you can see. So this is not really doing what I expected to do. It's like, no, no, what's going on here? So then I started adjusting all this stuff and going, yeah, and this on the right side is the non-vectorized and the left is the vectorized. But I'm like, no, man, just doesn't look like it now and then I say okay let's apply this and if I click here it's selecting it my goodness like it's it's broken up at wise it also pixelated and I'm like okay I need to go and go do a search why it's doing that but before I did that I actually looked up top here and I saw here it is pixel view so because I brought this in and it defaulted into the pixel view, um, it actually keeps the pixel view even though it is vectorized. Now, it's crazy to explain that, but that's why you're seeing this. And to get to the clean view, you basically click, yes, the vector view. Now look what happens. Boom. There we go. Pixel view. So the reason it was showing me that pixel view was because of that. But now I'm looking at this and I'm going like, okay, you know, these, these things don't look like they've been vectorized correctly. Then I thought to myself that that dialog box that I saw earlier might have something to do with it. And it did. So I'm going to undo it. Yet again, I went control Z and it didn't do anything. That's because I think you've got to, I haven't been here yet, but you've got to go into the settings and configure, figure your, your shortcut keys. Now, by default, I would have thought the Control Z would have just, you know, done a undo. But I think it's with all due consideration because you have so many of these different studios and everything. It's best that you set up in each of your studios your unique keys, uh, you know, because sometimes people don't want the Control Z to be an undo. They want it to something else. So, yeah, anyhow, that's the flexibility. So I'm going to just come here and, and do undo trace image. And we are back over here. Okay, so we're back on that section again. Remember, if you're going to do the vector, just put it over there. And now I'm going to go and go to vector, trace image. Now this dialog box probably will mean something new. I'm going to do the split view so I can go a bit closer. So here we can see it's still on 100 and 100 here, which I shifted to just now. But you can see here on the pixels view side, it's got sharp corners. And on the vector view, it's not sharp corners. So I'm going to just put this sort of halfway here and zoom in so we can see. So on the right-hand side, it's 
it's the pixel-based image the original we're using. And on the left, it's being vectorized, but it's not detecting that edge as cleanly like that. And started fiddling here now with my computer. It's an i9, but takes a little time to sort of do the update. So I just go excessively to the one side, see what that does. I'm looking for any change here. Okay, not much change. I'll just move it back up here. I'll take the curve fitting, move it right down, see if there's any change. And there seems to be a little bit of change there. Can you see that? So if I go here, I mean, just take this maybe up again to 100. You look at this here. This is the vector part here. Okay, you can see the whole thing is... is I'm going to just take it to 50% and see what it does. Probably will sharpen it a little bit, but not that much. Okay, so in the case like this, when you're dealing with sharp edges, it's most likely better to have a, a curve fitting tolerance of zero, like that. Now, just so that I can make sense of all of this, I'm going to take this halfway and see if it improves it in any way, and then fully to the left. Okay, we'll wait a little bit to see that updates. Nothing really seems to happen there. If I go further to the left, nothing. So I think that when you're wanting to retain sharp edges, you most likely will do this curve tolerance setting here. So I'm going to apply this. And there we go. So you can see now. And if the letters, the wording is going to be kind of cool, because in life, you don't actually have like, excessively sharp corners. They are usually a bit rounded, which makes a bit of a natural, but but yeah, you can see there's a little bit of artifacts. Um, but to get it to, to this level is fairly cool. It's another thing I want to share with you about how this thing does the vectorizing, which I think is very unique compared to other programs that we use. But before I go there, if you wanting to change these sharp corners, I could suggest that you go and get into your node tool. So that you've got to go to vector, get to your node tool. Now here again, I used to just tap A on my keyboard. Uh, nothing is allocated. I'll have to do that sometimes. So I'm going to go to the node tool and I'm going to just double click here and uh, not double click. Actually, just get back to node tool and click on here. As you see, now we're back into each of these things being vectorized. Now, if you are interested in getting this to be exactly straight, I would suggest you select the nodes like that, and then you come here to the context toolbar, and you'll see it says convert to sharp. You click those three, and you can see now it's out of sorts there. Um, but now you can go and level them all, and that will take it to being a perfect little right angle thing. In some cases, you're going to find a setup like this where there's two nodes. Yeah, it suggests you select the one and delete it. So you're only dealing with three. So it's one left, one right. And you don't even need the one in the middle. You could probably just delete that one also. And just use these two to change them to sharp nodes and select them and make sure they're on the same level. But in a case like this, you most likely want these um, let's see, these here yeah, all to be on the same level. So if you click here, okay, we'll get them all onto the same level like that. But that's for post-production editing if you need to. Then you're going to have your your things kind of there. Like, look at this R here. If we go here with the R, you might, you might have to do a bit of other tweaking by maybe making this node you're putting in a node there and changing it etc etc okay but that's not the purpose of this the other thing i want to show you here that i think is really superb when they change this into vector now if you've done any vectorizing stuff from a pixel based image what it will do is it will cut this into a vector and when you pull this there'll be a hole at the back but look at this here if i go and i take this Oh, wait, let me grab this as vector and I move it. Check that out. I think this is brilliant. It almost creates like layers if I go here. Yeah, look at that. 
it like separates them. It is phenomenal. I think this is the coolest lot. Of, I, I might be wrong in this, but a lot of other vector programs, when, when it cuts it out like this and you move this away, it's cut out in this background here. It's like it, it remembers the layers that are involved in the different thing. It, it actually retains them. I think that's extremely cool. So a revision of it, remember, when you go to bring in an image and then you turn it into a vector, just make sure that you have this one flipped over if you want to see it as vector. And uh, the other thing about it is also if you want to make these things sharp, just know that you've got to go do a little bit post-production. Um, you know, I don't think every curve in every design is going to have to be sharp. So those two adjustment uh, bars over here, I wouldn't expect it to, you know, make everything sharp 90 degrees. I think editing a little bit afterwards will, will add to that. Like in this case here, that might look natural, but if you wanted to make the edge sharper, you could go edit that. Great stuff. So have a fantastic day. Be blessed and shalom.